Sometimes life lets you down, and you feel that you are done. You just want a morning run because the fun is so gone. But sometimes life makes you proud when you look far and wide, when you leave the pain behind and see the brighter side. TNC gives you inspiration. TNC. Your passion, TNC, starts your transformation. TNC helps you see the new you. The new channel. The views, opinions, and insights expressed in the following show are those of the hosts, producers, guests, and viewers. They do not necessarily reflect the position of the channel. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, you're watching the new channel where we help to see you see the new you. I'm Leo O'Brien, and you're watching Foreign Affairs. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Foreign Affairs. It is good to be back. We had to take last week off due to some personal family issues, but uh, back here today and really excited to get back to uh, having some good conversations for all of you to watch and enjoy. Um, as you know, the basis of this show, Foreign Affairs, is all about foreigners and issues that have to deal with foreigners. And my guest today uh, is a gentleman who I originally first met when I was shooting my first television show here in the Philippines. And uh, we instantly connected on set. We were uh, talking you know, about life and, and the work we were doing at the time. And uh, the friendship has since blossomed into a personal uh, friendship, but also a very professional relationship in which we've done uh, a couple movies together. We've also shot on other shows together uh, and followed some very similar trajectories in the film and TV industry here. Uh, but I will not say at all that I've accomplished quite as much as this guy who I'm going to invite on today. Um, he is a, he is a Phil Ital gentleman. So that means he has Filipino roots and Italian roots. Uh, he is a producer, director, and an actor. And, uh, he actually got his start doing singing. Uh, and doing theater. So he is a man of jack of all trades, and he is now uh, the owner and uh, head producer at the company See Through Pictures, which started out as a filmmaking company and has now evolved uh, to another level, which we will discuss today, uh, due in part to the pandemic, but also due in part to uh, this guy being, he's he's a, what they call like in, in Spanish, they call him a cineastra. They're they're just movie guys. They have it in the blood. They know how to make them. They know how to be in them. And they love them so much that they keep creating and keep giving the opportunity to create. So uh, please, all of you, welcome my dear friend, Ruben Maria Soricas. How are you, Ruben? Come on in. Hi. I'm fine. Good morning <laughs> to everybody. 
Good morning, brother. Good to have you here. I'm I'm excited we can finally sit down and talk. This is it's turning out to be a tradition for me. All my guests, if I know them beforehand, I haven't seen them since pre-pandemic. So yeah. uh, I'm glad we're getting a chance to catch up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Why not use the show to catch up? So uh, yeah, great chance. We, we, <laughs> so um, actually, first off, let's let's explain. Um, let's let's start off first of all. Let's start off. Please give a little brief history of your life um, from the start all the way till now, and explain uh, add on to what I did on the intro, and then uh, we'll start talking about what we've been doing during the pandemic. So uh, Ruben, welcome. Tell the world what you're all about. Okay, thank you. Well, um, my father is Filipino. My mother is Italian, but uh, I was born in Italy and I lived in Italy uh, until I was 43. But since I was 18, I've been... Uh, traveling back and forth. And uh, when I was a teenager and uh, in my early 20s, I was always thinking, where should I live? In the Philippines or in Italy? Uh, I decided to live uh, in Italy because uh, when in my 20s, I was uh, a musician. I used to play guitar. I used to compose songs, uh, I had my own band, uh, I used to do some theater. So I was happy with uh, my life in Italy. And then uh, I had uh, a son in Italy with uh, my first uh, Italian partner. But then uh, in 2012, I decided to live in the Philippines because, uh, mainly because I had uh, some family issues to solve. Here in the Philippines, I have uh, many brothers and sisters and relatives, uh, and then my father was sick. So I decided to come uh, to the Philippines. And um, in Italy, I was uh, a filmmaker. I was directing films, uh, I was uh, acting, and uh, I just wanted to do in the Philippines what I used to do in Italy because that was my job. And uh, well, uh, I got blessed. I got also lucky. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty uh, happy of what I did here in the Philippines. And, uh, and also my, my, my profession in the Philippines evolved and I started also uh, I produce more movies I put up my own uh, production company that now it's also a distribution company and um, and I married uh, a Filipina uh, from which uh, oh, now I have uh, two wonderful uh, kids one is uh, only one year old. The other one is Albert. The other one, Kim, is 10. So here. Yes. Kim, the budding uh, artista, talentoso uh, son. He can, he's, he's following in your footsteps, I swear. But we, I, the, I had the chance to actually work with Kim, right? On the Spiders Man. We were shooting yeah. together with him on that. Andy. Andy Jams, he's a musician as well. So the kid, you know, your son is apart from just being a good kid, he's he's following in your footsteps on that. So uh, let's let's get to the uh, to the filmmaking real quick. Um, you come you come to the Philippines in 2012. You see yeah. the landscape apart outside. You know, obviously the family issues that's your main focus. But you look around. What did you notice about the film industry here, and and what did you think were your first steps to take in terms of what what led you to say all right filmmaking is going to be the focus because in fairness i know you do i know you're a musician too but you have an exercise is it fair to say you haven't exercised musicianship as much as say filmmaking i mean you do quite a bit of filmmaking so what was your focus in terms of filmmaking when you first came to the country well uh when i first came in the country 
I came with uh, two uh, films uh, directed and produced as a background, uh, but I didn't know anything and also anybody here in the industry. So uh, my first step was let's find somebody who can guide me here in the Philippines because uh, it's a new country as far as uh, filmmaking is concerned. So, uh, well, I think uh, I got lucky again because uh, I found uh, um, a line producer who started guiding me and uh, teaching me about uh, the Philippine film industry. But again, he's Filipino, but again, this guy, which is uh, Ramon Bravante, was referred, referred to me uh, by um, a foreigner, right. which is uh, uh, through a foreigner, which is uh, David Burns. I guess you yes. know David Burns. <laughs> yeah, we know David Burns. He definitely, Mr. Santa. Yeah, he's Absolutely. now. Mr. Santa. Yes. So, um, yeah. my line. In producer, fact, we were we were all on that first shoot. When I met you, we were with David, uh, yeah. you, myself, uh, who else? I think maybe Paolo. So there was, yeah, there was a bunch of the, yeah, the foreigner, yeah. community there. The, the foreigner community was there. Yeah. So uh, he guided me, started guiding me, and told me, you know, you produce two films, uh, are good films, but I thought I had to produce one film in the Philippines in order to make myself uh, known in the industry as director, right. because my first focus was uh, to direct. Right. Uh, um, well, before being a director, I was an actor before being a director. Uh, but of course, here, uh, when I came here, there's the different language, Tagalog. My, my English was not as fluent as now. So I said, oh, maybe let's keep aside the, the, the acting thing for, for now. Let's just uh, focus on directing. So um, I met a writer. Uh, through uh, Mr. Bravante, and we started brainstorming to uh, to find a good story. So we found we we, we wrote we co-wrote the Of Sinners and Saints uh, script, uh, yeah. in which uh, the, the 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 lead role is uh, is a priest, but it's a priest coming from abroad to do his mission yes. here in, in, in a poor area of Metro Manila. Uh, then I start thinking, the, the center of Catholicism is Italy, it's, it's Rome, it should be Italian. I said, but wait a minute. I can start in my own right. film, <laughs> yeah. Because I did, I never <laughs> did it right. in a feature. Well, I did it in uh, in short films. You know, when uh, I was studying directing, of course, I had always the camera with me, and then very low budget uh, short films. So I, I start myself in my short films back in the days. But right. this was uh, another thing. So to, to, to start in my own film where I, I was the producer and the director as well, I was going to be quite challenging, but I started to like the idea. I said, why not? I like challenge. <laughs> so I said, let's do it. <laughs> I cast myself. 
Right. So, um, <laughs> so uh, to do the film, we put up our own uh, production company and, uh, and we did it. And, uh, and I started uh, yeah. to, to, and I started to meet, to meet um, Filipino artists for the casting, very good artists. And, uh, yeah, and I start uh, familiarizing with, uh, you know, the Filipino way of dealing in the industry. And it was fun. It was, it was really fun. That's, that's do you, how... Do you find... Ruben, do you find that, that being uh, with a, a father who's Filipino, do you find, even though you came from Italy, do you find Filipinos taking you as Filipino? I beg your pardon? Do, do you feel like uh, even though you came from Italy and you, you present like you're, you, you look and sound quite Italian, even though yeah. your father is Filipino, yeah. do you, did you find when you started working in the industry that Filipinos took you as, part, as, a, as Filipino or do you, was it still pretty much the Italian guy who happens to be Filipino? Like, did you, you know, like socially interacting with people? Did you feel that? Uh, social interacting, uh, I'm still, I'm pretty still the Italian guy <laughs> who, who happens to be, who happens to be in, uh, in a way also Filipino. But the thing is, I don't sound, as you said, I don't sound Filipino. I don't even look Filipino, not even a small percentage. And, uh, right. and, and, and people are still uh, amazed when uh, I go to grocery, I go to buy things, and uh, I, start speaking, I start speaking Tagalog. I said, oh, oh, you can, you know Tagalog, oh, it's wonderful. And, and then say, well, <laughs> my father, is Filipino. <laughs> I'm a Filipino <laughs> nation. I said, ah, yeah, but you don't look. Yeah, because I, I, yes. I took hundred percent after my mom. It's like yeah. I'm the photocopy of my mother. It's like that. Right. So I, yeah, I, now, I can. I know, I know what you mean because, and I'll give you a funny example. The reason why I'm asking that, I find, I find it fascinating. The there's Filipinos, and I'm just saying, Filipino, any any cultural nationality. There, there's some who are born in the culture, look like the culture, sound like the culture, and are raised in the culture. And then there's some people who don't look a lick like it, and can sound, act and be that other culture, you know? And, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. for example, the, the example I always use is my sister who is Korean and she's adopted, but she's, I swear to you, she's more American than me. You know, she, yeah, she's more yeah, Irish yeah. Than, than I am. You know, so like it's, it's, you know, it literally, you know, we could, the book can have one cover and then it can have like a different, <laughs> different con table of contents, you know, yeah, yeah, inside yeah, yeah. and, and so I'm always, I, I find you fascinating in that sense. Like, you know, you're so Italian in so many ways, but you have a total, you know, Filipino, you know, uh, section of, of the history of your life, you know? So it's like, it's, it's part, it's woven into your fabric too. So it's interesting to see how people react to that. Um, I want I want to ask you, uh, moving on about the movies, so of Sinners and Saints, which by the way, recommend everyone to see. The cast is phenomenal. The writing and shooting was great. Uh, I loved it. Where can they see of Sinners and Saints? And then let's go on. Please tell me about these other movies that you've been doing since, because of Sinners and Saints was just the start. You've kept going, so go for it. Okay. Um, of Sinners and Saints can be watched uh, pretty everywhere now. Is out there in the US. Uh, you can uh, watch it on Amazon Prime, on Tubi TV, on uh, Hoopla, 
it's in the UK on Amazon, it's uh, in Asia on iFlix, here also here in the Philippines on iFlix, and now it's, it's only uh, on my platform, uh, iWatchMore.com, so there you can watch uh, most of my films, my productions, and um, about the other films, uh, after the Spiders Man, I did like uh, a silent film about uh, a, my family history, and that was uh, just for uh, a festival, a, film, a silent film festival. After that, uh, in uh, 2017, 2018, uh, I did um, the Spiders Man which, uh, by the way, stars uh, uh, also Lee O'Brien. <laughs> and Coincidence. Uh, coincidence. <laughs> if, okay, if, if you're saying I was in the movie, I was in it, I guess. <laughs> yes. It stars you as Spiders well. Man. Where can everyone see Spider's Man? The Tell them where they can man. see the Spider's Man. We got to plug it now. <laughs> yeah. The Spider's Man can be seen <laughs> on uh, two, uh, Tubi TV in US, in uh, Hoopla in US, in uh, Amazon Prime, whether you subscribe uh, uh, or uh, rent or buy it. And uh, in Asia, will be uh, soon available uh, on uh, I Watch More on my platform. And in Europe, will be uh, premiered this 24 and 25th of October in uh, Epif Film Festival. So uh, the Spiders Man is a special uh, screening of my own festival, which is the European Philippine International Film Festival. So uh, people from Italy and Europe can watch uh, the Spiders Man for free on October 24, 25 during the festival. And uh, well, in, uh, in the rest uh, of the world, mainly in Asia in, uh, and in Europe after Epif, the Spiders Man will be available, not for free, for a fee, <laughs> of course, but it's, uh, yeah. it's, pr it's pretty ridiculous fee. You can uh, rent it for uh, two, three dollars, and you can rent it for uh, a whole week. Uh, right so there. And uh, the Spiders Man won uh, a lot of awards. I think uh, we are almost to 20 awards uh, worldwide. And the nice thing is that we won in, uh, in a good festival in US, best uh, ensemble cast. So. Also, thank to you, Lee, and to everybody right on. who Team player. made it possible. And again, uh, it pictures uh, uh, some uh, family history mm. of myself, because uh, here in the Philippines, as I said, I have brothers and sisters, many, and uh, some of them have also like uh, some uh, serious issues. So this film uh, uh, talks about uh, a, a brother of mine also. And you, by the way, you play my, my friend and lawyer from US. Yes. So really do watch our film. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned I Watch More. Please explain what I Watch More is and explain to like how that came about, you know, and especially now with the pandemic, uh, it's, it's looking like an even more genius idea, right? So uh, please explain what, what happened with I Watch More. Where did you come up with the idea? Uh, what motivated you to do that? And uh, what, what kind of services does it provide? Well, um, my, my business partner, Paolo, he, he had this idea back uh, in 2017 
to, to open a, a website where to stream films, uh, but mostly in the Philippines. So uh, the idea was like to, um, to do fundraising here to produce films uh, and, uh, and put, um, how do you call it? with the fundraising with the product placement. So I have like a website where we could stream our own films and uh, invite uh, uh, products to be featured in our films. Of course, for, for a fee. Then we, 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 we talked again during this pandemic about this project. And then we thought, but why do we have to be limited to the Philippines? We, we, we should have something that can be uh, watched and enjoyed worldwide. So we started researching uh, and uh, we did like one month of research every day. I also studied the architecture, which is called the tech stack, the tech stack of Netflix. I said, I want to really know how, how Netflix works. So I started to study. Well, I have uh, a background in uh, uh, in computer science, so oh, wow. I, re okay. I really enjoyed this, uh, those stuff. You know, uh, right. so I started uh, studying and studying, and then uh, we came up with a project, and uh, we started investing some money, and now we have this platform. Um, I watch more who can uh, stream everywhere in the world. We, we use, uh, we use uh, the, the best CDN, which are the content delivery network. So we can reach uh, uh, everywhere with the maximum of quality. And how, how can you access I Watch More? Is this through an app or is this on for, uh, for now, is this smart TV? You can access uh, by web browsing, but in every, in every, um, uh, you, you, can, you can access it from uh, smartphone, uh, for, in, uh, from tablet, is, is, uh, gadget friendly so not only right. through a, a laptop or a smart tv so what you have to, to do basically type iwatchmore.com and create a free account because uh, for now since now we don't have much content we are just born and right. we have like 17 films only most of them are our are, are own films. Sure. So you, you can uh, uh, create a free account, uh, watch three films for free. For now, we don't have a subscription, of course, because uh, we don't have enough content to, to offer that. But uh, right. our, our plan is also to acquire independent films because our platform is mostly about independent films and classic films, like all the classic American films. Right. So our target, of course, it's like to have a library of uh, 200 films, but it will take uh, also some time. But I'm, I'm already in, in talks with uh, American distributors to get uh, more content. Right on. That's great. And then you and I were discussing before the show that, and then you've actually just mentioned it, that EPIF, the European Philippine uh, International Film Festival from Italy, normally showing in Italy, will now be showing on your, your platform. Is, yeah. Are you looking to invite more film festivals onto your platform? Uh, yeah. 
Epiv will be streaming on my platform. And uh, I want also to mention that uh, Epiv is, uh, is supported by FDCP, the Film Development Council of the Philippines, the Philippine Italian Association, and the Italian Chamber of Commerce in the Philippines. So all those, uh, oh, wow. uh, all those are helping me every year to make it happen. And well, about other film festivals, we want to create our own I Watch More Film Festival. So, um, and we want to give uh, the opportunity to films who are uh, officially selected to be distributed by us. This is our uh, model. We, we want to launch uh, the first I Watch More Film Festival next year, 2021. But of course, right uh, if uh, uh, we, still, we still have room for other film festivals, let's see what, what happens. Uh, what happens. Sure. Yeah. More the merrier. I think that's, that's a great model. If you can, I mean, obviously it looks great to get it to the distribution end. Uh, but even if you felt, if you did not get to distribution and you're still hosting numerous film festivals, you're, you're grabbing uh, the attention of a lot of people. Um, and I got to, Ruben, I got to tell you this before, uh, you know, before we're about to go to a break, but I got to tell you this one thing I got, re I respect a lot about you and I've seen you compared to a lot of other film producers is you don't get lost in the pre-writing the script, in the uh, pre-production, in the, oh no, where's our budget? We, even without a budget, you, you find a way to get movies made. And that's really admirable, man. Like I'm saying that sincerely, I've seen how you work and you, you made, you push through and you got of sinners and saints you got, I remember watching the Spider's Man be produced firsthand. Uh, and as well, uh, what was the other one? I'm sorry, the the horror one you shot in Tagaytay. Um, oh yeah, that the was uh, the Lees. Yeah, that was a co-production. Yeah. Yes. With the Filipino you know, like uh, producer. Uh, the you Lees, have, you have the perseverance, Lees, man. <laughs> the Lees has been uh, quite successful in US. Uh, people are watching a lot on uh, Amazon Prime mostly, but also in other Sorry. platforms. And uh, it will be distributed in uh, India. Because right on. In India, they, they, they like, uh, like the Philippines, they love uh, horror films. So we found a distributor. Right. Well, the, the, the plan was to have a theatrical release. But now, you know, uh, India, the situation is pretty bad with uh, COVID now. So let's see. But it will be definitely distributed in India. That's great. Right on, man. Well, hey, let's, let's go to a break and we're going to come back. And uh, we're going to talk a little. This was the fun part. We're going to talk about another F, a little bit of the, the fame side of life. Uh, but all of you are watching the new channel, TNC. We'll be right back to Foreign Affairs.
Welcome back to Foreign Affairs. I am Lee O'Brien, your host. I'm very happy all of you are here watching this show. And uh, as I mentioned before, this is just one of many shows here on TNC, the new channel. Um, as I said before, TNC is kind of this ray of light that's come out of the pandemic. Uh, you know, started a month and a half into the pandemic. Uh, the two producers, Lloyd and Apple, decided to come together and create this this channel that has now blossomed into a multi-show network. And uh, some of the shows that are coming your way are really interesting and uh, cover a wide variety of topics. So um, we definitely encourage everyone here to please watch all of the stream shows. Some of the shows that you can uh, you can watch are, for example, we let me see what I got on the list here. We got the big picture. They're inspiring stories of media of national notable personalities Mondays to Fridays at 7 p.m. Then we got human resources management on HR hotline Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 12 noon. The family business is everyone's business Saturdays at 4 p.m. Then you got life, business, and success stories on the fourth project. Those are Saturdays, 10 p.m. Dubai, 6 p.m. Philippines. Beauty Beyond What Your Eyes Can See, the real hit show, Usapang Beauty, Saturdays at 5.30 p.m. Time to hear positive stories from those who recovered, COVID stories, Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. That is actually a really, really popular show. And uh, certainly during the pandemic, it's great to hear positive stories about the COVID issue. Life Purpose and Turnaround Stories, U-Turn, Mondays and Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. Build and Own a Property, The Home Buyer, shows on Mondays and Thursdays at 4 p.m. Laugh and Learn from Property Art, puppet, Puppetry Arts Around the World, The Puppet Stories. I just, it was on Mondays at 5.30 p.m., The Puppet Stories. I just realized that's Puppet. I'm sorry, I've, I've read this five times. That's The Puppet Stories, Mondays at 5.30 p.m. Magbenta Bumili at Tumulong Dahil Bukas Manaang, TNC Marketplace. An online night bazaar, Thursdays and Fridays at 10 p.m. Know Your Rights and the Basic Law, YOLA, Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. Learn About Money and More, Tuesdays, 8.30 p.m. Philippines and 5.30 a.m. USA. Two Leaders and One Platform, TNC The Talk, Mondays at 12 noon. Chill and Booze, After Shift, Wednesdays and Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Strategize and Win in Life through the show Win Within, Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. Kids, dream, achieve, nurture, and inspire. Watch the show Danny Art Show on Fridays at 5.30 p.m. Because health is wealth, watch Healthline, Wednesdays and Fridays at 4 p.m. Celebrate the show William, Women at Work, 9 a.m. Saturdays. Always have an awesome day, is the name of the show, Mondays at 2.30 p.m. Cyber Next is a show that empowers people and companies to be secured in a digital world, Wednesdays at 12 noon. Know the emergency technology shaping your future. Tech Yo, Fridays, Tech You, Fridays at 2.30 p.m. And then, of course, you can catch also our TNC original shows. The show One Day, a live storytelling show, and then alternates with TNC Town Hall, which is co-hosted by the two TNC founders I mentioned before, Lloyd and Apple, a show where we talk to you, our valued audience. And then, of course, Learn Together Across Borders, the show you are watching right now, Foreign Affairs, on every Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. There's more upcoming TNC shows that will truly inspire you. So please follow our channel on Facebook and YouTube and let us help you. Hashtag see the new you. So we're talking with Ruben Maria Soriquez, um, and we just had a great talk about the film industry. Um, as I had mentioned before in the first half segment, uh, Ruben is someone who, you know, when he puts his mind to it, puts his focus on it, he gets the movie made. Uh, he's not only started the European Philippine uh, International Film Festival, he also was very, very instrumental in helping the Cine Europa Film Festival, which is a European films festival that comes to the Philippines and shows European films, uh, help them get off the ground as well, and was very influential in that. And then, of course, as he mentioned before, he has his new... Uh, online uh, video on demand service. So now he's in, in housing all of the, the uh, distribution and showing of movies. Uh, Ruben, please come back here for a second. Yeah, yeah. For a while until we Good finish, morning, until we finish the show. Yeah. So um, let's, let's pull the e-break like Senna. 
Let's get over to a different topic. It's similar, but it's on a different track. So, man, um, some people that are watching this show are probably looking at you and know you, not from the movies you made, not from film festivals, not from your musicianship or, or your fatherhood. They know you because you were the famous father of Liza Sobrano on the hit show Dolce Amore a few yeah. years back. Am yeah. I right? And um, so I would love to talk about this uh, with you because I, I know I knew you before the show, you know, right about right before they started doing castings. Right. And so um, not like you were someone known, you were known, but within the industry. And then you do Dolce Amore and you're Liza's dad, Liza Sobrano, Enrique Hill being two of the biggest stars in the country. And automatically from one day to the next, when you walk outside, everyone starts knowing who you are. What, what, what was that first like for you to deal with and as a, experience that, especially having been in the country four or five years, and then all of a sudden this begins, what was that like, that transition for you? Well, um, again, um, I want just to to tell uh, the uh, the little story behind uh, my being cast of Dolce Amore, because it all started uh, from a singers and sense. Because you know, once you put your focus in something and you get it done, then it, a, a positive uh, spiral will start. It's like uh, I did uh, of similar sense with my uh, own funding, with my own company. And when I submitted the, the film to MTRCB for the rating, they loved the movie and they uh, referred me to Viva. And they said, oh, look, we have uh, a good director. Maybe you want to, to know him. So they got me an appointment uh, in Viva uh, with uh, Jun Rufino, the vice president. And Jun Rufino and I, we had uh, a lovely chat. And she happened to be the manager of Sherry Hill. Sherry Hill was already casted in uh, Dolce Amore. So I received a call from ABS, ABS CBN, and uh, Giu Rufino referred me to ABS. That's uh, what happened. So uh, again, it's uh, it's a matter of luck also, but you have to help your luck. Well, um, there it is. I was very happy to be included in uh, the TV show because I had the opportunity to act in Italian, in Tagalog, and in English. So I really loved the, yes. the, the, the challenge. And uh, I had also to uh, coach my co-actors in Italian. So usually, usually I would help Liza with the pronunciation. I would also give a hand to Sherry Hill. Although Sherry Hill, she lived uh, for some years in Italy, in, uh, in Venice. And then I also had uh, ABS from a production point of view. I was not supposed to do that but uh, they, they were having some uh, problems with some line producer in Italy. And I offered my services. I said, wait, I'm, uh, I produced two films in Italy. In Italy. I, know, I know places. I, I have a crew there. I have production managers. I have location managers. Maybe I can help you. They said, yes, please, please. And I, and I almost found all the locations in Italy 
for ABS-CBN. And uh, I brought them to shoot in my own town, where I had a uh, very good connection with the Film Commission. Uh, I, know, I knew places, you know. So really, I shot part of, uh, they shot part of Dolce Amore in my hometown. That's another thing I was very happy about. And, uh, and I remember when uh, uh, the director, Cati Garcia Molina, and then uh, uh, um, director May, May Cruz, they told me, mm. oh, you know, we know for sure that people will love your character. People will love you in this uh, series. I said, okay, let's see. Because we were shooting, we were not airing yet. I said, oh, let's see what happens. Uh, for now, I'm, I'm just enjoying. It's, uh, I'm enjoying working, so let's see. And they were right. Yeah. <laughs> they were right because- People loved it. People loved it. And when, uh, and I started receiving uh, thousands of messages in uh, Facebook, Instagram of teenagers calling me dad, asking me for uh, advices. Till now, there are people, uh, they call me dad, how are you? And they ask me for advices. That's because amazing. they saw me there, the good father, and uh, right, yeah. it's there in printing. So now, not, not only <laughs> from the Philippines, but uh, since uh, Dolce Amore was broadcasted in uh, Malaysia, and uh, in a lot, uh, I learned, in a lot of African countries. So there yeah. are... <laughs> there are people from Africa calling me dad. <laughs> <It's crazy. Nice. laughs> yeah, from Sierra Leone, from Benin, from South Africa, from uh, Cameroon, from uh, Kenya. Right. So it's, I still enjoy that. I still enjoy that. And uh, being there in uh, like in 90 uh, episodes on prime time, well, gave me a, a big push, really. Gave a big push to my career. Yes. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, th I'm thankful for that. I'm really thankful. And uh, yeah, ab about being recognized uh, when I go around, well, I, I've always uh, found it normal. I don't know why. I was not, uh, you know, uh, amazed or uh, overwhelmed by it. For me, it's, it's normal. Mm -hmm. Because also in Italy, in the South, when I was shooting a film, I was kind of uh, uh, known in the area. So I had people uh, asking me for autographs. Uh, for me, it's, uh, it's normal. Sure. I'm just... I just try to be kind with, with everybody. I, as far as I can, I try also to answer uh, direct messages of fun or reply to comments. Because, and then sometimes they say, sometimes they, they say, wow, you answered me. Oh my God, <laughs> I answer, oh my God, what? I'm a person like you. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, you, you are the star. Of, no, no, I'm the person. So if I have if I have time, when I have time, I just browse the messages, and sometimes I I answer. If somebody asks me a question or an advice, I just answer. So it's not uh, oh my god, <laughs> because uh, but we are we are all. Uh, Uh, we are all human beings, but yes. some yes. we have different paths. Some are uh, for different reasons. There's some some reasons are also beyond our understanding. 
you know, we are in different situation, but this doesn't mean that uh, if I'm known, uh, I have to, you know, look at you from above because I'm someone and you are nobody. There's no such a thing for me. Right. Right. Totally agree. I totally agree. I, I wanted to ask you about that just because, you know, from day one being in this country, it's, it's what I've uh, dealt with that, um, you know, wasn't, uh, wasn't something I dealt with before, but it like, you know, it, it literally happened overnight. And I remember when Dolce & More came out and having talked to you beforehand and then talking to you after, and, you know, I mean, it was, it was noticeable and I've seen how people react to you and know, you know, even if they don't know your name, it's Tata and Eliza, you know, straight up, they know who you are. Yeah, uh, they, they you know, don't know. Yeah, they don't no, know. No, no, no. Lucas, but <laughs> they say, you start a of Liza. <laughs> yes, Tata and Eliza. But, I know what but, you feel. Sawani Pokwan. I know. I know you know. Like, <laughs> but now, you know, some, I told you that uh, I go to the grocery to buy this food. Is great. Yes, yes, tell the story. And then with the mask, with the face shield, I don't go well right. dressed because, say, oh, well, nobody can recognize me, so I can go with short, with slippers. I don't care. <laughs> like, like, uh, and, uh, Often they say, "Oh, that and Eliza. Oh, I know you. You are from Dolcemore. You are you are the Papa Roberto." I said, "How the hell can you recognize me with all this <laughs> thing on my face? But is is the the yeah. beard that goes out of the mask? Is that I don't have hair? Right, right. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's why they call them the fans are fanatical." They, they know quite a bit about the stars and they know quite a bit about their favorites. Hey, Ruben, uh, let's go to another break. When we come back, going to do the third F. We did fun. We did fa we did fame. Now we're going to talk a little family. So uh, you guys are watching TNC, the new channel. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the new channel. This is Foreign Affairs. I'm Lee O'Brien, your host. Let's bring Mr. Ruben Maria Soriquez back here on the set. Um, so Hello, Ruben, you, you and I uh, have another thing in common. We both uh, have children here in the country of the Philippines. Um, and, uh, but you're unique in the sense that as well, you previously had a child in Italy before you found your uh, Filipino roots or exercised more Filipino life. And then uh, you met, obviously, your beautiful wife, Lani. Um, did you guys meet in Italy? Was that right? No, we, we met uh, in the Philippines during the one Philippines. of my visits uh, to my family here. We, we, met, okay. we met back in 2005. So in 2006, okay. 
in 2006, she was already with me in Italy. So it's it's like uh, it. it's like she lived like for uh, ten years, ten years in Italy because uh, now uh, my family is still based in Italy. Well, not at present because uh, they are stuck here in. Uh, in the Philippines because of the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> I mean, yes. the, 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 the flights has been canceled twice because they were uh, supposed to go back, uh, to go back already for uh, the School of Kim. But right. twice the, the flights have been canceled. And now in Europe, Europe has, uh, is experiencing the second wave of COVID yeah. right now. Totally. So let's see when they can uh, go back. So, so you you had you had your first child, uh, your first son, in Italy, and and was with him there, and then you raised Kim, kind of half and half, and yeah, uh, right. your newest son, uh, Albert or Alfredo. Albert, Albert was born in uh, Italy. In Italy, right. Okay, and is he he's here in the Philippines now? And uh, he's here, yeah, he's here with uh, actually he's sleeping now. That's why you don't hear uh, much noise. Yeah. <laughs> he's very right. Uh, House is surprisingly calm. Surprisingly yeah. calm. <laughs> I've, I've only, I've only so I, here. Uh, what I, what I'm yeah. asking, what I what I'd like to know is. You had that experience of, of raising children both in, in Italy and here in the Philippines. What are what are, what do you see as some big differences between the two places in terms of raising a child and in terms of the family environment around the child? And what are some similarities? I, I could imagine uh, the Italian and Filipino cultures, they've got some key components that are very similar, you know, besides the Catholicism and you know, family's very much a, a centerpiece of both. What uh, what are some similarities? What are some differences in terms of, of raising a child in either country? Okay, so um, here in the Philippines, uh, we have uh, enlarged families. We have large families, so uh, it's easier to to have a child here and to grow up a child because there's always somebody you can keep an eye. The grandmother, the grandfather, the aunt, uh, or the brother-in-law, the sister-in-law, those huge family are so nice. It's a so nice environment uh, for a child to grow up. In Italy, Italy used to be family oriented, used to be. It's pretty much the same in the south of Italy, in the south. But the north, uh, not quite anymore. Family now uh, downsized, mostly mother, father and kids. Grandparents live uh, Elsewhere, sometimes they have time to help, sometimes don't. Because mostly if they are young, they are have their business, they still work. So you have to hire a nanny. And uh, well, uh, also um, about uh, living with, with uh, grandparents, it's a thing of the past in Italy, because now, uh, since life is so difficult, so fast, uh, there's so much pressure, so the uh, parents are really very busy, and uh, ch children from uh, like one year, of age, they they are already in kindergarten and uh, nursery and then kindergarten. 
and uh, grandparents when they grow older they don't work anymore and uh, they start having uh, you know uh, health issues they are put in uh, in the houses for the age elderly for the elderly so it's not pretty much the same as it used to be in the 60s and the 70s in the philippines uh, it's still like uh, was italy back then so here when i'm here my wife has all the help uh, she needs from the lola the lolo yeah, yeah. the sisters uh, the brother the wife of the brother it's it's so much easier here when you are inside the house the environment outside is quite different in my opinion it's way way better in italy because uh, uh, it's safe to walk down the streets meaning you have a sidewalk you can really walk here uh, except from uh, for makati and bgc you cannot really walk on a sidewalk there are always even cars parked there a tricycle and uh, it's so dangerous there are holes everywhere it's not uh, children friendly the city here there are no there are no uh, there are no parks in, in the Philippines, clean parks uh, and safe parks where uh, children can uh, run and play. So uh, also, only now they are starting uh, having uh, bicycle lanes because in Italy, uh, in, especially in my hometown, Bologna, we have kilometers of uh, bicycle lanes. So if I need to go anywhere, I can bring my son without being uh, uh, scared to be to be run over because uh, right. it's it's safe here uh, it's not it's really not the way people drive uh, the, the status of the streets it's really dangerous and uh, <laughs> so when we are inside the house it's easier in the Philippines <laughs> because we have Yes. Family, yes. But we are when we are outside uh, uh, Europe and Italy in particular, it's way way better. It's a better environment to, in my opinion, huh, to grow up a child. And I, I yeah, I talk I to with friends who have children. Also, some Italian friends who have children here, they 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 agree. Also, of course, the standard of education is different. So that's why uh, Kim was studying here in the Philippines, but he really right. told, asked me that I want to study in Italy. Can I go back to Italy? He said, OK, it's, uh, it's OK. You can go back with uh, your mom uh, and study in Italy. And he's so happy. To, to study there because also the standard of education uh, well it's quite better there right so so you're saying they don't drive counterflow in Italy of course not <laughs> <laughs> so there is don't I just check check in. there's no counterflow parking on no. the sidewalk uh, and, no. and the side it's so funny you said sidewalks because Literally, sidewalk has to be the least appreciated part of urban development, you know, especially in the cities. Like, if there's a sidewalk, it's not walkable, either in its condition, its width, its state. I mean, it's I I, I find it amazing that you bring it up. But I think that's, that's an amazing uh, comparison contrast. Inside the house, the Filipinos, Philippines has it. And inside the outside the house, the Italians have gotten it. I think that's a a great uh, that's yeah that's an interesting interesting point. 
Um, Ruben, that is about all the time we have. I hate cutting this short um, because the conversation is just kind of like getting started. But uh, please take the time right now. Tell everyone where they can reach you, where they can reach see through pictures, where they can reach uh, I watch more. Go, oh, brother. You got you got a couple minutes. Just promote. Thank you. Okay. Hi, guys. You can reach me on Instagram, Ruben Maria Soriques. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook, same, Ruben Maria Soriques. Uh, you can uh, watch my films on uh, iwatchmore.com, which will be hosting also the EPIF, European Philippines International Film Festival, this October 24 and 25th. Uh, seven films for free, but uh, it's only available from Italy and Europe. So you can only watch if you are in Europe or in Italy. And uh, um, what more? I watch more. <laughs> that's <There> all. <laughs> oh, that's great, my man. Dude, Ruben, fratello mio. Thank you for being here, my man. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Grazie mille. And uh, I'm so glad we made this happen because uh, not only catch up, but I mean, I find you a fascinating guy and obviously Thank you. Uh, love working with you and love hanging out with you. So uh, glad to be here. Please give Lani and uh, Kim and uh, little Al uh, my best. And uh, thank you, brother. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely be uh, catching back up with you. All right. Thank you, bro. Have a good day. Ahead. Thank you, brother. Bye. Thank you. Likewise. Take care, my man. Bye. Yeah, love Ruben. He's one of my favorite guys. Uh, just a good, good soul. Uh, Lonnie, his wife, and his kid Kim are just great, great people, too. So I uh, was really happy we finally got him on here and uh, could talk movies, talk filmmaking. And now, you know, we got a little video on demand going on, little iwatchmore.com. Check it out. And also get over to Amazon Prime. Check out of Sinners and Saints. Check out the lease. And, of course, self-promoting The Spider's Man, our award-winning uh, movie, um, which are all showing now on Amazon Prime. You can check those out now. So thank you very much, Ruben Maria Soricas, for your time. Thank you, brother, for being here and appreciate it. That, folks, is all for uh, Foreign Affairs this week. As always, I'm Lee O'Brien, and uh, make sure you guys check out uh, two things. My blog, Poke Lee Cooking at YouTube, and also come check us out over at Poke Lee Food Products, at Poke Lee Food Products, be it on Facebook or Instagram. We got all the good Filipino ulam, kananalang. We got the suka, laing, alige. We got it all. So come check it out. And you can also reach me on Instagram or Facebook at Lee O'Brien. So that is, this has been the uh, fifth episode now of Foreign Affairs here on the new channel. Thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And uh, catch us next week on TNC, the new channel. Bye now.